let's see, hope you guys, hopefully you guys are back with me here. Sorry about the interruption there. We had a typical OBS crash. Hopefully that was the only one. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it was at a small one runway airport. Are you like, uh, I can't remember. Are you United States, East Coast, West Coast? Are you in a different country? I'm just curious. I'm trying to get a feel of like where you, if you're in the United States, like where you were. But if you don't want to share that, it's fine. United States, that's cool. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look at that attitude indicator. I gotta work on that animation. It doesn't do that in X-Plane 10. So I'm gonna find out along the way here how this airplane performs in 11 versus 10. Yeah. So I fly uh, in New York when I do go flying. And um, I'm on Long Island. And what happens is when you're out over the land, of course, there's turbulence on on, a, on days where there's, you know, you get uh, good lifting over the land. On Long Island, it's not always good lift because it's a sandbar averaging about 15 to 20 miles wide. Um, so the ocean, you know, basically absorbs a lot of the solar energy. But uh, what happens is typically when there are days where it's decent, you know, conducive to turbulence uh, over the land, it, it feels that way but then once you fly out over the water, there's a good amount of training areas, like right along the beaches and uh, it really smoothens out when you go over there, so uh, so I'm going to put this at 7,500 for now, Let's see, what are we at? 5,400 actually, I'm probably going to cruise at 9,500 so one of the things I noticed uh was that the scroll support on the VSI portion here instead of going in hundreds it goes in tens it's livable I might change that but hopefully they do it eventually so it's not terrible though it's workable because typically the adjustment is between a thousand up and a thousand down so it gets there pretty quick Yeah, no, 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 that's okay. Now, I wasn't even asking for the exact airport. I was just curious, like, you know, are you East Coast, West Coast? But that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I get it. Alright, so we're going to pick up flight following. And let's see if we can get the frequency out of here first. I think we're going to be talking like Salt Lake Approach or Salt Lake Center or something like that. Yeah, you see, I don't even have like a real frequencies page. It's a private airport. Uh, but do we have anything here? ASOS, ATIS. Uh, so the ARTCC is Salt Lake. Flight service station is Boise. I guess I could just look up Boise. Here's Deneen Cerizo, if you want to order some real estate. But we're not going to do that today. Alright. Uh, okay, so we got no information there. So yeah, we're down over here, by the way. I'll kind of brief us. Just a minute. Is this Boise? Billings. So, well, let's just pick up, like... Great Falls should have some information. Okay. And Great Falls. In case we have approach and departure. Tower, Clarence Delivery. Alright, so we could have tried one of those, but I'm just going to jump over here and see if I get, like... Actually, hold on. Put that over there. Let's come over here. Get this. And nearest air traffic control center. And we'll pull up that name. 
Uh, you flew two and a half hours yesterday, and you have two. Oh, so you have two, two point eight thousand. Wait. Two point eight k. What do you mean? Two like the dollars in in the uh, FSE. That's cool. I I I'm hooked up on FSE, but I don't use it yet. We're gonna try one thirty two point four. So three, two, point four. So like sent a radio check. A lot unclear. Got a 1260 cut act departure. Okay. Uh, cool. So we do have a uh, frequency that works. And Flying Joseph. Uh, let's have a look at the local weather. Chalice Airport ish, or weather station. 030 at 4 knots. So it's like kind of take your pick. Uh, let's have a quick look at the routing, by the way. All right, so we're total. Of, I mapped out a route that's about 261 miles long, and what I want to do is basically fly off to the northwest, and we're gonna follow a road, basically around through the mountains. So it should look. I could have just stayed and followed this road, followed the highway, which I typically do quite often. Typically do quite often. Is that not a redundant statement? Anyway. Uh, but I wanted to sort of enjoy some of these like mountain valley flying here, so uh, we'll do that. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in a little closer. Let's put this right here. And let's see if Great Falls. Dota 1263 Seattle departure radar contact. Okay, let's climb go and maintain one five thousand. So as 1, we depart. All right, we're going to follow this Possimeroy, oh man, I'm mangling that pronunciation, river, Daddy. town of May, some ranches, we're going to follow Route 93, and uh, basically head like north, past Lemmy County Airport, Salmon. Uh, squiggly roads along the Salmon River. Four four one zero Victor Bravo, Salt Lake City clearance cleared to Boise International Airport. Twin Falls three departure. Then us filed. Climb via the Sid XF maintain for level two two zero. Squawk one seven seven zero. Over by Gibbonsville on Route ninety three. We'll hang it right by Big Hole Pass, and then we'll pass through the pass. And uh, we'll make a left up this valley. Hopefully, it'll be relatively apparent. And come up the big old river. And then at this point, uh, Air we'll Commander continue. Squawk uh, 1770, 1770. On a northeast heading until we get to this area of Anaconda. Air Commander Zero Vic Bravo, back right. Uh, wow, what's tailings? Look at that. Tailings. What does that mean? It's like a little outline area. It says the word tailings and tailings over here. I guess maybe we'll figure that out as we get there. Hit the highway junction. There'll be like a little uh, area of water, warm springs uh, right here. But we're going to then sort of go down to the east southeast at Burt Mooney, hang a left, back up to the north. East, north, northeast, and uh, just follow the road the rest of the way in. So we'll see. Ten, big pile of rocks. Faction, oh, uh, that's Center interesting. Roger, the Thanks, Let's see, just see how that will show up in the ortho. So is the word tailings like a word used for, like when there's rock piles, they call those tailings or something? Alright. 
Oh, we got some kind of traffic out here. Oh, you know, I gotta do that on my next flight. I gotta talk to Goldsy. There's a way to, uh, to, uh, like, I wanna contribute to drone traffic in the pilotage area. There's a way to, like, record your flights so that they can use it on pilot edge or something like that. Just to give, like, more drone traffic in the expansion area. So if you're mining for gold, you dig rocks, wash them, process them, and the crap that you spit out. Ah, that's interesting. And I, I'm assuming, like, do they recycle it or use it for various purposes? Or... Let's use 3025. Or do they just kind of leave them there, typically? Total 1263, Cadillac, Seattle Center, 126.6. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna take off on the northeast facing, or the northwest facing runway. Greg had made a normal map for this airplane a while back, but, uh,. So we have like a matte finish because I don't have that installed yet. It actually kind of looks cool almost. It's like flat black finish, flat matte. Oh wait, that's the runway. Although maybe this Total is 1263 Seattle Center verify one two thousand. Back taxi situation. Now, maintain, I, level two, three, zero. I just got me dizzy. The nice thing about having a forty-inch monitor is you can actually get kind of disoriented. Visually. Alright, well, we have no frequency to talk on the airport, so we're just gonna yell at that guy. Hey! We're 410 Victor. We're back Bravo. taxing. Salt Lake ground, runway 35 taxi via QL. I'm just intentionally going full scale for a minute. There we Out of 1263, Cadillac, Seattle Center, 125.1. I don't think I set my trim. I want to set my trim. I just want to see how it behaves. So I want to put this at... Total 1263, Seattle Center, Cloud Maintain, Fall Level 3, okay. 4, 0. And Total 1263, for direction of flight, uh, do you want Fall Level 330 or 350? Feels like the rudder uh, steering is a little steering more sensitive here. Three four zero is unavailable for direction of flight. Do you want three three zero or three five zero? Here comes seventy knots. Delta sixty three, climb maintain level three five zero. You got a positive rate. Gears coming up. I like the gear animations. This airplane. Low uh, 
manifold pressure. I think that was somebody else that commented on that. Yeah, we're through 500. I was I would go to 25. See, I should still be able to achieve at this altitude 25 inches of manifold pressure. Seating position's a little high. First 7 Charlie Fox, I got a rooting of infantry, advise ready to copy. Number 7 Charlie Fox, I have a rooting amendment for you, advise for ready to copy. Nine 7 Charlie Fox, I cleared a Sakurai executive airport via direct Turlo, direct Linden. Direct. So Sunshine Fox, uh, correct. Alright, so we just took off. There's this road and a river. We're 17 miles, probably another 15 now. So there's the road. Ooh. Ear blast. Gotta reset my view. Here's the river. Doesn't look very rivery, except for just the way the land looks like it gets all wet sometimes. Cockpit just got braided. Alright, um. Or 410, Bravo Select City Tower, one 35 clear for takeoff. Uh, Dirty Ratchet, yes, this is X Environ. Uh, negative appears to be off at this moment. Uh, squawk altitude. So, like center, Bonanza 5, 7, 6, Tango Bravo, VFR, climbing through 8,400. Yeah, I can show you my settings, Dirty Ratchet. I'll show them to you in just a minute. Zero Roger, running Let's get level. If I forget, just remind me. Should have climb with the VFR request again? Yeah, uh, Bonanza 576 Tango Bravo VFR climbing through 8,600. I'd like to pick up flight following to Great Falls. We're uh, approximately five miles northwest of Flying Joseph Private Airport. Yeah, I can. I'll, I'll bring it up on screen in just a minute once I'm uh, level. I'll, I'll hold it up there for more than just. Okay, transmission. I kind of broken. I didn't get the whole call sign. Was it number five seven six Tango Bravo? So you said. Affirmative. November five seven six Tango Bravo. Looking for flight following. Or five seven six Tango Bravo. Squawk uh, six five four seven. That was six five four seven for five seven six Tango Bravo. Six Tango Bravo. Affirmative. Six. The numbers look a little darker on my radio. Five. Four. Normally these numbers here are a little brighter. Okay, six, five, four, seven. Let's see if turning up the 
instrument lighting. No. What about this flood lighting? No. Doesn't do anything. Alright, let's go up over here. So we're leveling up at 9,500. I guess I'll put my manifold at 20 inches, 2300 RPMs. Just lean it out a little bit. First oh. thing, take an operator contact, 27 miles southeast of the uh, quick attack VOR, the Great Falls, altimeter 3011, altitude Cape 9500. Okay, three zero one one for the altimeter. Thank you. We're going to have five seven six to Bravo. Recommender zero Victor Bravo. Connect departure. All right. So I forgot to map my uh, my mixture, but that's okay. We'll just uh, try to use this. You're going to sort of stay here. Ooh, ooh, come on. Over 410, Venture Bravo, Salt Lake City departure, but our contact, climb and maintain, flight level 220. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, flight level 1263, contact Seattle Center, 135.15. Timer's running. Okay, so we are. Do we still have our river? I do see something out over here. Delta I have a feeling that's where I'm going to begin 15. my turn. Let's see. So we're coming up here. There's a road, Route 93. That should be basically a left or a right. And relatively high terrain off to our right. So. There's a road coming over here, left and right, I think. And here's our high terrain. 10,000 feet. There is a river going along here. And on the chart, there's the road, along with this little thin blue line, the river. Okay. Delta 63, Seattle Center, I so we're going to make uh, a turn round to uh, 360 around the box million. Verify, you're at level 327 now and climbing. Cool. And yeah, we're just going to follow this up that Okay, way. Yeah, you're indicating level 330 now. Are you, is that correct? So, uh, Dirty Ratchet, once I make that turn, I'll uh, pull up those settings for you. Roger. Check it out. So indicator we're 9500 we are cruising kind of slow. Okay, this turn is 3005 basically around there. do if you want you can also take a you can take a screenshot of the settings so you can like look it over and adjust yours you know experiment with it um, what are you noticing with yours how are you uh, you said you're running I'm assuming you're running Xenviro so uh, how do you set up yours or like, in other words, what are you looking to change, if anything? I'll give you a quickie on this. So basically, put it over here. So what I have on my weather settings, I keep everything uh, down a minimum. 
It's basically this is like the realistic settings. It allows for the lowest possible visibility of being reported. Double twelve sixty three verify your climate. The maximum wind speed, turbulence, hundred percent, all that. And uh, I do an update every ten minutes. Uh, cloud settings over here. All right. Uh, we don't have any clouds to see right now, but my cloud brightness, I put it at 49. I like that setting because in it's a little different than what I have in X-Plane 10. So in X-Plane 11, I have it at 40. 50 is fine. You know, I don't know why it says 49. Like one notch, you're not going to notice the difference most likely. But it gives a little bit of gray That's areas awesome. in the Perfect. shadows. So the lighter and the darker areas give it more of a 3D pop. And uh, over here, right, the, I have, I shut off the post-processing, okay, and the light scattering. Uh, because the light scattering, I think, makes it too blue. Either way, this X-Plane scattering still works. Spokane clear, it's clear so you can compensate with that. Because you still have a little bit of blue scattering Spokane in her, in, at least in my view. Temple. It has that slight Weiss, blue uh, twin to it. Arrival. Well, I think the post-processing currently, the way it's, it's just a matter of, per, matter of personal taste. It just makes it, to me, oversaturated. And the light scattering choice, the problem with that is it creates sort of like a, an, an obvious, in some cases, an obvious ring where it transitions from normal saturation to blue saturation. It's very defined. It doesn't transition nicely. If they ever improve that in the future... I might start using that feature. So. Oh, does it track... Uh, I'm just confused on, like, does it track real-world weather or just random... No, no, no. It's all based on real-world weather. So it contacts its whatever servers it's using. And uh, it's always providing what real-world weather it has access to. So it doesn't really do it randomly. However, I think there are times where, for whatever reason, it doesn't match up perfectly. People have said, uh, yeah, you know what GPB is saying there. How you doing, Greg? I did not turn on scenery shadows, no. Well, the scenery always creates shadows no matter what both in X-Plane 10 and 11. But I didn't turn on the extra feature to create, like, the global shadows where all objects cast shadows. Even with those off, actually, when the sunlight hits an object, it will light it brighter on one side and be darker on the other, like buildings and stuff, even, when that's all, even with it off. Um, it, just, it just doesn't cast a shadow on the ground the building or anything like that. I don't really like the frame rate hit that it does. So. No, 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 no. It's not the same. Here we got some river meandering taking place. So, we're uh, just cruising on up this way. There's my dogs. For the next 30 miles until we Roger see Salt Lake City Center 132.25. Salt Lake City Center 132.25. Oh, there's a big delay. I also looked at the chat a little late. Or 410. I mean, I, on average, I I see about a 20 second. Or 410, Bravo, Salt Lake City Center, Roger. However, I, I am giving my, this airplane four seven another shot. 475 Foxtrot, Squawk 4770. Kind of sucks that we're riding a tile border. Or a it's out of 143, spawn, uh, correction, Spokane ground. Did you call for taxi? I, w I did notice, though, that the power, it's underpowered. Well, I'm assuming that it's more accurate next plane 10. 
because normally at this altitude, like here, if I put the throttle to the floor here, I can't even get, normally at this altitude I can still get 25 inches. Anyway, and cruise at about 140 indicated. Delta 200, Canax, Alex City Center, 135.77. Although that to me seems like something that so sim like coders like should be able to fix. I can understand how sim coders wouldn't fix like textures and stuff like that, but I thought sim coders was in the business of modifying performance. But maybe I'm missing something. Delta 200, Salt Lake City, interrupt. Might be Lemmy right up here. November 9 or 2 from Charlie Foxcraft, uh, North Calipers, from Modesto, Altimeter, C9 or 9 or 3. I take it that's Lemmy Airport up there. The scenery sure looks nice. Okay, so that must be Lemmy Airport, right? Levy County, the town of Salmon, coming up on the Salmon River. Subsonic, how's it going, buddy? Just cruising along here. We're passing over Lemmy County. Coming up on the town of Salmon. I'm assuming we're in Idaho. Doing a little alphabet challenge in the expansion area. Flight number six.
So we just came out of this valley over here. Very straight road over there. kind of interesting to see how like there's another area of development just kind of coming out of the hillside we had one coming in from where we just saw all feeding into the salmon river area wow look at that small race track and it looks like a bigger half track. Uh, you mean like literally off of the org or something? Yeah, I saw there's a sale going on, Exterminator, yep. So I guess Gaming Reborn, you're interested in GA? What about one of these Simcoders Real Expansion Pack airplanes? Other than you have to spend the extra money on the Real Expansion Pack, but... Or, the what do they have now, four planes? Look up what airplanes the Simcoders already supports and see if you have one of them and buy that. There's like another river coming down. It just turns off that way. Delta 143, Spokane Tower, wind variable at 5, runway 22, cleared for tech, correction, runway uh, 21, cleared for tech. Two under. Yeah, that's cool. I don't have that airplane, but uh, I know a lot of people like it. Okay, so we're basically climbing up right in this area. We're going to pass the town of North Fork, so we should anticipate a squiggly road and river. And then at North Fork, we're going to turn to the right, and then maybe see how many miles it is approximately afterward. Eight miles after that we should come up on Gibbonsville and I want to hang a hard right at that point. So we don't want to miss that turn. So here's our squiggly road and river. Oh, look at that. See, this is that weird lighting that takes place in 11. So now it's like the Viagra blue shade. It's uh, it says we can call this the. I took I took a Viagra pill and got the blue shade effects, side effects in my vision. But what's interesting is it doesn't happen on the terrain. It's just on the panel. Oh yeah, well, I, I personally, you know, wouldn't buy anything now until X-Plane 11 uh, upgrade.
Oh, is that that arrow that you bought for like 14 bucks or whatever? Alright, so we have the yeah, wiggly that's going like on, Curly's and then at that point, uh, we're going to... Uh, just be advised, sir, um, going to need you to reconnect to the network uh, with a November in front of the call sign. Um, zero, that's zero, that's five something that, that needs to be part of the call sign. If you can just reconnect with that there, I'll so go ahead and... So that's happening here. Uh, we'll fork uh, in the road. Departure information there for you. There's another road that goes off that way, but we're going to go off that way. Yeah, that was like a... Free it was like a there's freeware airplanes parking. that are better than that, basically. I mean, I, I didn't fly it, I just saw the way it looked, and it was quite minimal. Oh. Built 143, can departure for radar contact. Climb and maintain 1 2000. So we're going to hang it right there. And then after the right, we're going to go another eight miles. And then there's the road at Gibbonsville Roger, heading to zero, zero, eight zero basically. It's not going to be very big. But it's the big hole pass. So let's take this to a heading of zero, zero, 005. For now, at least. Okay, so uh, we just switched the fuel tank. Let's reset our timer. One seven two, Mike Charlie. Spokane ground roger. Uh, departure frequency one two three point seven five, and squawk six three. Or correction, squawk six five three seven. November 117, Mike, I'm going to read that, correct? Uh, so we are in Idaho. Direct to Temple, join the Glacier 1 arrival. Pretty sure it's Idaho. Yeah, we're on the, we're Idaho, we're going to enter into Montana. So we're going to go from Idaho to Montana once we pass the big hole. state of drunkenness, yeah. Okay. It's actually kind of hard to see the road now. Oh, here we go. Let's keep going this way. Okay, so... Now, we're not using X-Plane roads. We're strictly relying on orthophoto, which actually is kind of cool. Um, I do see some development, what might be like houses and stuff. So that might very well be, let's see, Gibbonsville. And then the road will continue up. And when I look down to the right, I want to see if we can maybe see that little tiny thing of water. I don't. I doubt I'd be able to notice that, but it's possible. There's a ski area up there. If I go to. If I went to a ski area, I would have gone too far. All right. So we have. One forty-three. Yeah. So we're gonna call this. Contact Seattle Center. On Gibbonsville. See the little houses along this road here and everything. And then. Delta 143, 132.6. Now 
That would be a heading of 070. Zero, zero. Let's go ahead and turn. Delta 143 affirmative. 137.5, basically. November 172, Mike, Charlie Spokane, ground runway 21, taxi via Charlie. Uh, correction, that uh, November 172, uh, Mike, Charlie, <laughs> correction, runway 21, taxi via Golf. And the whole idea is that we can uh, take this over the hills. Delta 143, Seattle, Center Roger, climb and maintain, by the little 220. Out into this like lower altitude valley area. Should see like a road, some rivers. So I got in here basically. How many miles do we have to go? Uh, 15 miles. Definitely some nice, uh, scenery, huh? Hmm, yeah, you see, that's, that's... That is, the, hey, Illinois, how's it going? Uh, we're using Google. This is Google source. Pretty nice, right? The other one to use is Bing. So Bing and Google are good. November 410, Victor Bravo, Salt Lake Center. Uh, did I do any comparisons in this area? No, I did not. Oh yeah, I know, the Grand Canyon area is totally drab over there. It looks okay, like it, but it, yeah, it is, it's like definitely a relatively drabby color. Uh, all right, so let's have a look over here. Once we're out in this area, the heading we'll eventually turn to is zero to zero around there. If we hit, maybe we'll take it all the way to this road. So in that case, it'd be like, basically like zero, zero, 005. So if we cross this road, Odell Mountain, um, we should be turning to that heading. So, okay, now I'm looking at this squiggly road at the moment, and we got that road out there. We got this little body of water here, and I got a road there. So let's see if we can identify that little body of water. That might be this. I don't know. Might be. November 172, Mike Charlie, Spokane Tower, wind variable at 5, runway 21, cleared for takeoff, straight out for our group. Got that little tiny body wire. That's even smaller, though. So it might be this. If that was it, Let's see, that little body of water, and then there's that road. So you got this water, and then this road. Looks like a dried lake area. Uh, I'm not seeing a depicted road. Actually, maybe it's this. See the way this road kind of steps. Um, might be. I'm seeing how this road kind of steps around. It's going to see if it runs through a road going 
that way. I do see a road out here going in that direction. We'll see how that works out. Although this intersecting here and where the river was, uh, the, where the water was, it looked too close together compared to what I saw on the chart. But we'll see. Illinois, uh, you know what I've been meaning to do? Uh, I'm going to post... I'll try to do that over the next couple of days. So, you know, you know when you scroll below my video window, it gives, like, the details of the specifications and my sim setup and everything. I'm going to put, like, a, uh, a list of the key settings that I use in Ortho 4XP. Like, what curve tall I use, the water ratio uh, all that stuff so that if anybody likes what they're seeing they could potentially just dial those numbers in and run a tile and see if they like it too alright so uh, let's see what we're coming up on here so I do see a road going basically left and right this road's coming up to an end point Look at this road. See this road? Steps in, straight, in, straight. And it intersects there. That might be this. Straight, down, straight, down, right to a road. And this should be it. So, if that is the road, we're right on the money. However, the other day, when I got lost, I was like, ah, right on the money. And then I was totally lost. So... Greg uh, had a taste of doing liveries when he tried to help me with this this airplane's livery. So it might have been a nice turn off for him. <laughs> Alright, so here's our intersection. And the heading we're going to turn to according to that was about we we'll could try with 360 initially. Hey, look at that. So, there's a private airport here. I think the airport is supposed to be on this thing right there, but as you can see, it's not. Let me shallow out the turn so it stays out our right window here. Our left window, rather. There's a little town. So airport, town. It's like this is where the guy plugs in his airplane, right in that, in that little hangar there. So this is definitely one of the cool things about not using X-Plane roads is just you get the true color of the roads as they blend into the photo scene like they do in real life when the photos were taken. Only bummer is at night you don't see the lights along the roads. Okay, so here's the town of uh, Airport Wisdom and Town of Wisdom right there. So November one seven two, my Charlie. Feeling contact pretty department. confident that we're uh, on the right track. Wisdom. Town of Delta Wisdom. Two hundred contact Salt Lake Center one two eight point seven two. Uh, no, you know what it is, Chemo? I didn't make the overlays yet for this new scenery. I will make the overlays. November 172, my Charlie. Eventually. Okay, the and then just do the just that. Have the option by disabling the overlays when I want to fly, let's say, daytime. Delta 200 contact. And then maybe if I'm flying nighttime, I could re enable them or whatever. Something along those lines. What would be really neat is if X-Plane gave an option where, like, Delta you can you can turn on and off the roads, Center, but then you need the roads to do the night lighting along the roads. So what if they just gave us an option where you turn off the roads, but the data's got to be in there somewhere that they could use the data to trace the night lighting. 
Delta 200, Salt Lake Where the roads would be. So you could enjoy the night lighting of the roads without actually having the roads being drawn. Just let the photo scenery do it. That might be an interesting option. The dots. Oh, hold on. Delta 200, you're loud and quick. What dots are you talking about? Delta 200, Salt Lake Center, Roger. Oh, the, oh, you're making that livery of that cargo jet? You ever watch Cessna Rock stream? Yeah. Uh, Delta Fall 63. Tackle Center, Roger. Wow, look at land. Tackle some pretty interesting topics on that stuff. Maybe he'll give you pointers. All right, so we're going to hang this right. Follow uh, that road right there. Looks like adding him about zero one zero for now will work. like a 10 minute nap before I got tonight. Oh, it's amazing how much better the water is drawn in this versus G2 XPL. Yeah, exactly, Cyan, right? And you know what's weird? Like, I can feel this fog in my head right now. Just a sort of drowsiness that's lingering in me. And it's so strange how just 10 minutes, right? I can just close my eyes for 10 minutes, wake up, and it's gone. But if 10 minutes is all it takes, like, why can't I just sort of fight through it? I mean, sleep is the weirdest thing. You know, it's like, it's like this strange battery recharge in our brain, I guess. But like, how does it really work? All right, so we're kind of cruising up this way. There's a bunch of rivers, and one of them is considered the Big Hole River. A couple of roads. The river gets pretty squiggly over here. Ultimately, what we want to be doing is turning to an adding of like zero two zero, just following the valley around. Uh, but when we get to the ski area, we want to continue on adding of zero three five. So. That's the basic plan. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> November 410, Victor Bravo. Advise when you have the Boise weather and uh, when able to say approach request, descend via the court to arrival. Uh, unable to specify landing direction. That'll be up to you. Just let me know when you've got that weather and uh, which uh, approach you'd like. So here's another example that's make that was weird about naps. I wake up in the morning and I'm all set to go to work. You know, you wake up, you're kind of tired still, whatever. Is there a Victor Brower up there? And I'm showing the Boise altimeter. Even now, after a good five. night's sleep, sometimes I'll still be tired. So take my shower, get dressed, head off to work. And there's a couple areas like in the it's a pretty big parking lot. So sometimes what I'll do because I'll be like feeling all sleepy. Seven, Charlie Fox, Strat, advise when you've got the executive weather and uh, plan a visual for a runway two zero. If you have another approach request, please advise. So I'll be feeling like kind of sleepy as I'm getting there. So I'll I'll pull like under a tree in the summer and take like a a set my phone alarm for like fifteen minutes. It takes me about five minutes to fall asleep. Doze off for ten minutes. Wake up. And I am good to go. Rest of the afternoon, no issues. If I don't do that, I'm going to definitely like feel it. Okay, so that 10 to 15 minutes, right? However, if I just say, 
you know what? I'll sleep the extra 10 and 15 minutes later in the morning and not take the nap, right? So let's just sleep in another 10 or 15 minutes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't... I'll still wake up the same way. It's almost better to wake up a little bit of time, a little bit tired. Seven Charlie Fox, I got to expect that visual correction. I'm sorry. Take my shower, get dressed, eat three, breakfast, zero. go to work. When I arrive there, take the 15 minute nap. Seven Charlie Fox, I got to expect the straight end. Uh, then it is to three, not zero. take it and sleep the 15 minute section. You know 4, what I mean? 000. It's really weird. So I don't know. It's just a strange phenomenon. Uh, no, typically what I'll do is I'll have a, yeah, like a, you mean like causing a crash? No, I usually have like a scrambled egg, two egg whites, a muffin, you know, toasted muffin, and uh, I'll sometimes take a slice of ham, you know, cut it up, put it, mix it in with the eggs. That's pretty much it. So the road at this point is turning off to the right. If I were to follow, so I'm on my 035 heading. All right, now the road is starting to turn off to the right, going that way, and then this turns up that way. Uh, so, zero three five. the road is turning off to the right kind of a weird place where it's a ski area because it doesn't even look like it's hilly enough. It just feels like the ski area should be up on the slope somewhere, right? Anyway, alright, so let's go back. So what I'm going to kind of do is follow this road. It comes off of here and back up that way, I think. Yeah, so we're going to stick with this road. See how the road comes over here, turns and goes up that way. So we're basically following this road going up that way. I'm seeing something about a ski area over here. I'm not really seeing it yet, but Delta, I'm going to go ahead and switch my fuel tanks. Mike yeah, I'm not sure. Seattle Center, 132.6. Well, I don't know if I'm seeing anything considered a ski area. Unless, uh, Unless it was snow here, we'd see people sliding up and down November the November 172, Mike, Charlie, Seattle, Center, Roger. November 410, Victor Bravo, you can block, say again, your approach request. No, that's all right. I'm still relatively confident we're on the November right November 0, Victor Bravo, expect the uh, RNAV Yankee runway 2. Right. Exterminator. That is true. Sometimes it's like, where is that? What are they talking about? Alright, so we've passed, I think, the Phantom Ski Area. This is going to end 
we're going to continue straight on. And you can see how the terrain's higher up here. 7700 is the high point that's going to fall back down. Like this airport's down at 6300. Uh, 6,000 foot contour here. We might see this body of water. Anyway, when we hit the highway and railroad tracks and all that stuff, we're going to turn to about 110. Follow this around to Burt Mooney and then hang a left. Alright, and I feel like we're already starting to see like hints. Right here's like we're at 9,500. Here's probably the 7,000 foot peaks. Then it falls off. Uh, I don't see a body of water just yet. Might be. I don't know what that shadow is yet. We'll see. There's a big thing there, like a spike of sorts or whatever. Mr. Bow, dude. What's going on, man? Thanks for hosting, buddy. Uh, Zero Victor Bravo. Where did you want to pick up the RNAV approach from? Uh, is this the Sierras? We're in Idaho. Uh, actually, we crossed into Montana, so I don't know. Is this considered these Sierras? This is Anaconda Range over here, Flint Creek. Uh, I'll sort of give you the big picture, although we can zoom out. So we're like right here. This is Tobacco Route, Flint Creek Range. Remember Zero Victor Bravo Roger. Where did you want to pick up the RNAV approach from? Um, I can only clear you for for a full approach in there from an initial approach point or initial approach fix, I should say. Uh, just let me know where you'd like to pick up the approach. I don't show anything on the arrival that will connect you directly it's like with the Sierra RNAV Nevada approach. is down over here, and the Sierra Nevada mountains are down over here. But I don't know if what this is like overall considered. Oh, okay, interesting saying, yeah. Hey, Mike Zulu, thanks. So yeah, it's like some big, giant spike, smokestack, something or other. Whatever it is, it's large. So we're crossing these 7,000 foot. hills here and let's just have a quick look at the chart again so we're crossing this uh, letter A 209 feet obstruction maybe that's it the town of Anaconda Anna, yeah Anaconda and Bowman Airport uh, but yeah we're going to basically Zero Victor Bravo, Roger. Actually, just right. looking at the approach. I'm sorry, I, was, I had the Zulu approach up, and that wasn't showing anything at the next. But uh, I do show um, an initial approach fix off the arrival. If you want to just fly the arrival down and then join the approach, um, otherwise, yeah, if you'd like to go direct to Kinnak for the approach, we can do that as well. Zero okay. Victor Bravo, Roger. Proceed direct to Kinnak. Cross Kinnak at or above eight. And I'm sorry, cross that can I get a big stack there? We got a little stack there. Right approach. We got the town right here. Is there a rubber cross can I got above one zero thousand for terrain? Yeah, it's a stack. Five eighty five makes sense. November 7, Charlie Fox Track, contact NorCal approach 127.4. So there's that main road. Delta 1263, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain level 240. Somebody's stream must have quit. Got a bunch of autos coming through. Alright, we said 100. Delta 143, contact. Seattle Center 126.6. Or 110, I'm going to go to. Okay. 
Remember, Niner 27, Charlie Fox, Strat, North California, Roger. Advise uh, Executive Airport in flight, 12 o'clock, to the remote. Here's a uh, relatively main road. Kinda Delta 143 Seattle, that way. It looks like it's turning Delta up. Delta 1263 descent at pilot in that direction. direction. Maintain level 240. Some stuff over here as well. Uh, so what's happening now is basically we're cruising on this way. We're going to come up on Walkerville. The letter M will be added to November 576 Tango Bravo, side. Salt Lake Center. The uh, Burt Mooney Altimeter 3025. Three zero two five, but as a five seven six ten Bravo. All right, so we have that already set. We're good there. So we should be coming up on Burt Mooney Airport soon. Burt. Burt Mooney. Looks like, uh, we do some kind of excavation out there or something. I don't know. Let's see. Mooney. Uh, I guess it's a mine, right? See the little mining icon right there? And then there's a statue somewhere. But. How do you pronounce that? You're supposed to say butt? Buddy? Bute? Alright, so here is the town. B U T. U T. U T. I'm such an ignoramus, but. <laughs> Bonanza 7, Charlie Fox, Charlie Roger, clear to visual, approach runway 30. All right, so south of the town. One of the runways will be in relative alignment with our vision. This one is a little hard Delta to see, even though it's big, Oakland Center, one because of the angle that we're two. coming in at it. There. The town is here. The airport should be. I don't know, that might be it right here. And then, uh, and those hills are looking so cool out there. Delta 1263, Oakland Center, Roger. Descend uh, via the Bodega right 2 arrival. And, uh, correction, descend via the Bodega 2 arrival, San Francisco altimeter 3000. So I have us kind of passing to the south of the airport, which is not necessary. We'll just make the turn and follow the road up by L Park Pass. Yeah, so here's the airport. Commander Zero Victor Bravo, report established on yeah, the final approach. Yeah, sure. It does. Uh, I've been love what's going on there. Delta 143 cross Jackson at maintain 10,000. 250 knots, uh, Seattle altimeter 3018. 
So here's this road passing up through the hills. So we're going to go ahead and follow that road. We'll sort of swing around the mine. Let's go ahead and start a gentle turn now. Check out the airport over there. So there's, uh, there's the airport. Looks like it's alignment with ortho at the moment looks relatively decent. I did, uh, but the settings, although it did change a little bit, the settings in this air, this, oops, wrong one, in here don't really, but I don't seven, Charlie Fox Track the behavior seems power a little off, point five. power settings and everything, I'm flying this, air, this X-Plane 10 version airplane and X-Plane 11. I did re-download fresh and reinstall in X-Plane 11. I don't think it really makes a difference, apparently, in here. Didn't say, like, are you putting this in X-Plane 10 or 11? November 927, Charlie Fox Trout, Executive Tower, Runway 30, yeah. clear to land, wind, like, very can't get three. the normal power, manifold pressure that I, that I normally do in X-Plane 10 Bravo, in this, Roger, no traffic are indicated, in Boise Airport. Report it's definitely cruising lower in the, lower the, air the or on the ground. than normally it would, so. so. You just have to wait for the update. Ground Zero Victor Bravo just confirmed. Would, did you want to cancel now or cancel on the ground? Ground Zero Victor Bravo, Roger. IFR cancellation. Check out that building. Squawk and maintain a VFR frequency change. Almost looks like an observatory. I guess these are cell towers, huh? Some kind of antennas. Right, Delta 200 on contact Oakland Center 127.45. Texture border. Alright, so now we're cruising on this way. We should be able to see uh, uh, the uh, white tail reservoir, although it's on the other side of the slope here, we may not, but let's see. I don't see the reservoir yet. Lego Star, Lego Star creates. How's it going? Dump two hundred one two seven point four five. That might be the reservoir four, over there. Let me just listen to my voice now. Oh yeah, no kidding. Dump two hundred Oakland Center, Roger. Yankee Doodle tailing spot. <laughs> nice. Hey, uh, down both fly. Three. Thanks for You'll those, get buddy. that with approach, but the rival Welcome is aboard, runway specific, uh, so you can pretty much plan for the two eights uh, if you're on the Bodega two every time. Zipper line text uh, border here, Te texture border rather. But anyway, hello everybody. We're just uh, do a little VFR action, pilot edge, Western U.S. expansion alphabet challenge flight number six, which is uh, taking us from Flying Joseph Private Airport over to Great Falls. 
And I don't think we're too far away from our destination. The flight's going pretty well, though. So. Uh, how you doing, John? How you been? All right? I think you did a little Zebo action. Hope the flight went well. I think you like the Zebo as much as I like the F-33A, John. What do you think? I think that's an accurate statement. So we're going to hang a right at the town of Basin. The letter J might be in the hillside somewhere. I'm just going to follow the road, basically, and uh, cruise on up. <laughs> hey, man, it's one hell of a... Of a model. Especially, I don't think I'm actually I'm as far as I thought I was just yet. Um, be interesting to see if Laminar officially adopts those modifications. Throw the guy some bones and, uh, and do some other airplanes. Uh, exterminator. You did a good job figuring out a good wrap in the section line. So the so I have trouble locating it. Okay, so that's the, yeah, that's definitely like a practice item because one of the things I always have even now the hardest challenge for me with the sectional chart is the scale of things. So like you look on here and you say, I want to fly from this part to this part, you know, and you can see it says like when you use the tools, right? It says like uh, let's see from here to here from this turn to this turn is about nine miles on average. But then, when you look out the window, and you start thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, how far is nine miles? So, so one of the easier ways to do that is just start at a relatively populated area. Like, I started doing this over the ZLA, uh, pilotage coverage area, and there's some good main roads Delta to track around. Um, you know, that with time, you just keep picking out details that you want to track to. And you get better and better at it. Delta yeah. one, but it's rocket. very helpful. Uh, the other thing, system. too, is triangulation. So let's say if we were trying to find wikis, you know, the town of wikis, right? So you're like, well, how far up this road? Well, we know we're going to track this road, this main road. And definitely start by my other piece of advice would be definitely start with the main roads. Bonanza, 7 Charlie Fox. Trying to track left, these little um, tiny roads can be very tough. Or uh, if you're going just to the ramp area, uh, if you definitely want to continue down runway And sometimes there might be and more than one end, you can taxi of these into the roads out frequency. there, but they've only depicted one on the chart. So you're like, well, wait a minute, which one is that? <laughs> so that can throw you. So right, let's switch those fuel tanks. Anyway, so our road is now turning to the right. And uh, coming up this way. We also have a set of power lines coming through here, so it's going up that way. So, like, confirming things with two sets of landmarks is always helpful. So, like, uh, like we know that the road is turning to the right. So, our road is turning to the right, and we can confirm that by these power lines coming through that we just saw shaved in the hillside. And it should cross, the power line should be crossing right by the town of base. So we're going to turn right in 090, Bob. So well, at this point, a little late, we're going to turn 100. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm assuming that might be the town of Basin. There's some houses down there. You can see the power lines there. That kind of tracked in there. Right? Coming up there. And we should see it at our left. So you see that? So I used a few things to confirm that this was the road, we had the town, we had the power lines coming up. Um, and then the other challenge I find in like the hillside stuff is that you know, sometimes you look at a sectional and you're just thinking, all right, you know, I'll follow this road. But then you got to pay attention to the, the topography around because, like, let's say I wanted to follow, you know, this road or this river. 
and I'm coming up from this way, and I'm like, all right, I should be able to spot that river by 15 miles away. But if you notice it being surrounded by two hillsides, there's no way you're gonna see that river unless you're either at 15,000 feet, you know, like basically several thousand feet higher than the peaks, or letting yourself get much closer to it than you normally would have to for, let's say, out in a flatter area. So sometimes I forget to pay attention to that as well. So but it's definitely a lot of fun. I mean, I love doing it. We're gonna hang left at uh, the town of Oops. Whoa. Okay, town of Boulder and Boulder Airport. I don't know if we'll see it. At that point, we're gonna turn landing about zero one zero. Actually, that's Boulder right there. Road's turning to the left, going up that way, and that looks like about zero one zero up that way. So, okay, uh, I think I changed my control tank. Yeah, Delta Twelve Sixty Three. I'm right showing right you right above right. the restrictions of the arrival. Can yeah. you verify okay, that so. you're descending via the Bodega Two okay. arrival? Well, the last piece of descending via complying now, with the speed restrictions. Like typical views, right? You get your forward. 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right. But if you're doing a lot of VFR stuff besides this typical one, I set up another view where I'm like all shoving my around. face Just up against the glass. Just to confirm, that's descend via the Bodega kind of to arrival. Down. It also indicates to comply with the speed so restrictions as well. VFR so you can speed 280 knots. This is like the, hey passenger, what do you see out there? You know. So I got like my, for the pilot standpoint, looking out that way, but then we get the blind spot of the door here. Uh, if you were to lean all the way over or ask somebody to look out. That's a at uh, 16,000. You're going to transition to a local... But altitude. what I try to do is, while I have this view so here, be I keep my heading and attitude indicator in the field as well. So that way I can easily see, like, uh, you know, I program my Y key to turn my OBS. I'm not on my heading, but to the left. No, it's all 63, right? Just hold it down. Get the heading going. Now I can go back over here if I want. Or up that way. And we're gonna follow that road up that way. Delta one forty three contact Seattle so approach one three five point six. In addition to the you know, chart, does anybody know how many terabytes the whole entire U.S.? I would agree with that statement that Greg just put out there. Yes. If you got like a mixed zoom level of seventeen and eighteen say five kilometers around airports going to 18 yeah should be able to get it done in about that eight terabytes and then strongly consider uh, your backup ter uh, drive as well because if you're going to do that much work you know the work is mainly time right but imagine building tiles you know every night for the next however long it takes to build the whole U.S. Uh, try to budget in, you know, maybe not right away, but eventually within a few months, getting yourself a uh, backup drive to, to back Delta up one point three channel approach, Roger. Expect a visual approach runway three, four, center. If you have another approach right, request, so we're just please following this road up this way. And, uh... We're basically getting pretty close to where? Actually, that's not our destination. Still have a little ways to go, but we're getting there. Passat, 323, thank you very much for following. Let me just take a quick phone call. Delta 1263, oh, contact the North Delta Approach to 135.1. Uh, the Delta airspace, by the way, here goes up to 6400. We'll have no problem with that, so. Delta 1263 North California Perch. Advise you have um, the ATIS at San Francisco. Expect a visual perch runway 28 low. If you have another perch request, please let.
Delta Paul 63, Roger, expect uh, ILS runway 28 left approach and uh, vectors to Archie. American aircraft, I'm sorry, I missed the numbers on the ground at San Francisco, but it was loud and clear. God's thing for the follow, buddy. At yeah, Delta 1263, I'm showing you off course from the arrival now, uh, north of the airport. You should be tracking towards the brick intersection and then there's a 140 public heading off the arrival. Where are you flying directly right now? Delta Paul 63, okay, Roger. Again, um, you need to fly the arrival until you're given something different, or if you do want to break off the arrival at some point, you got to let Earth Traffic Control know before you start doing that. Uh, fly heading 0, 9 or 0, Vector's final approach course uh, towards RQ. Sorry, guys. I'm sending a quick phone call back to somebody. So, cool. We are cruising. Coming up into this sort of flat okay. area. Delta 200, defend that pilot. <coughs> <coughs> and that should be uh, the town of East Helena. So I think we're like right in this area right now, kind of coming up on here. And we should see Helena Regional. Should see some water. Hauser Lake, Lake Helena. And we're just turning we're heading about 340. That looks like a runway over there. Needs like another mining area. Okay, so I don't see anything about a mining area being depicted.
Delta 1263, turn left heading 070. Okay, so, uh... Not a, okay, yeah, so that looks like a runway. Runway going that way, maybe. And... Hmm. Unable, unable to confirm at this time. But the town is very obvious. So we're gonna go to a, yeah. Uh, Krabulescu, Krabulesk, thank you very much for following. All right, let's turn to 340 and see where it, it lines us up as. To me, it just looks weird because it looks like this runway is crossing almost at a 90 degree angle to this runway. Oh, let's check this out. Oh, wait, hold on. Delta 1263, roger. Traffic's not a factor right now. Um, Again, just wanted to make sure okay. that... Uh, yeah, there is a small runway. Uh, there wasn't something else going on there, but There's that's actually, fine. Like three runways. Well, the best thing to do here is the following. I'll have a for you in about uh, one zero miles to join the approach. There we go. So now we're seeing... So we, I did see this runway, and the main runway. I just didn't notice this one here. Let's have another look at it. Delta 143, turn yeah, left, okay. heading 170, vector speed final. So here's the this runway, there's another crossing runway, and then there's this runway that Delta way. Delta 143, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain 6,000. Okay. The idea was to turn 3, 4, 6, and follow this. Just some... Okay, and uh, maybe that's why I'm a little disoriented here. sense now. Okay, so we're going 340, 345. So we're going to follow this road up. I'm going to start following this other highway going that way. That would have really thrown us off. Let's get a little closer to that highway, though, for now. And then there's this body of water up to our right. So that is Lake Helena right over here. See so yeah, how the lake is pretty big right here, and then it sort of tapers into toward the river. And we should see that over here. Here's the lake, and then you see how it's tapering up toward that river in the haze. Cool. Delta 1263, turn right, direct Archie, cross Archie at 8,000, cleared ILS, runway 28 left, approach. Delta 1263, confirm uh, clear to ILS, runway 28 left first. King Air 2, Mike Early, contact Yakima approach, 123.8. You know you're addicted to flight simulation when you're hoping, you correction when you're hoping you your friends, friends visiting show up a little late. For so you can get in another flight. <laughs> Oh, what's this? We have a little missing texture item here. Although I can't look at it in here. Let's see where we are. Hold on. Uh, we are in tile. Let's get rid of this. This is... November 172, Mike Carly, Chinook approach. 40, it was right on the border. At 46.113. I'm guessing that this missing piece is, right? Here to my Charlie Yakima. So if I were to go to zero, zero, here. Zero. And go here. Oh, D drive. And 46. Delta 143, just going to maintain 4,000. That. 
Delta 200, send via the Diamond 3 arrival, San Francisco, altimeter 29 or 9 or 9 or. One of these are going to be black. Sorry, I know this is kind of boring. Just want to confirm it though. Next should be down in the zoom level 1819 section. There it is. Right there. That's the offending tile causing that little black spot. I think. Oops. All right, so what I wanted to do was passing Lake Helena, the road curves to the left and the right, then it curves to the left, up by Holter Lake, back to the right, and we'll make a right turn. Damn, sorry. So the road... Okay, so there's, like, that body of water. What's my heading now? Three, four, Delta 143, zero. turn right, heading 260, just going to maintain This way. Oh, wait, no, there's our road. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let's get reoriented here. Kind of hazy out, huh? So we're cruising up this way. There's no other big roads like that. So we'll just follow this route 15. Delta 143 rolling out on the 260 heading advised Seattle Airport in sight. 2 o'clock, 1 zero mile. So let's go to heading of uh, 350 to get that road back to the left. Here, to my Charlie, verify squawking six three. <laughs> What's that? What? Six five three seven. I'm not sure where you were going. Me being lost for a second, or uh, or watching tile uh, assessments. Rodrigo S G Q. How's it going? Yeah. So it looks like. To my Charlie, Roger. It's gonna it come around. The Yakima and weather, that way. Say, uh, straight in approach for runway two seven. And uh, so it's going to basically come around this way. Let me see my I'm showing the surface wind that it just changed a little the bit. The offensive uh, file. At five, nice. So if you'd like runway niner, that's available as well. And this was three, four, six. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just shoot up that little valley notch I saw over there. Let's just go right down here. Delta 143, cleared visual. Let the road 3, 4, pass 7. underneath us again. I think I see the lake over there. It's nice and hazy out. Yeah, it hurt your feelings. I'm gonna have a talk with it later on. I'm gonna tell it. Listen, you can't be doing that. My viewers don't like that. Don't like to see like bottomless pit tiles showing up. Mel Snell, how's it going? Thanks for following. Uh, Pat Dog. So that one was made by JSnap, and uh, I don't know if you follow him. If you search for JSnap1982 in my friends list, give him a follow. He has a contact. There's also another right overlay right that's been used quite a bit. Uh, Benesim. B E N E S I M. Delta 200, contact North California. I bet if you Google Benesim overlay, he's got another one that is a little even more colorful. I think JSAP's going to redo this one and you know make it even more extensive than what he has now. 
I'm not sure when he'll be able to get around to it. So there's a couple of different sources you can go. Um, few people that use using that medicine overlay. If anybody knows the link to it, feel free to post it. I don't have a bot that's going to kick you or anything, so... Alright, so our road is coming back around. It was... Kind of came up this way, around this notch, coming over here. Under our nose, out in front of us. We're going to file that uh, North California Tractor, thanks for uniform. Expect dial-west runway 28 right approach. The left uh, side's off. Yeah, it is cool. It, and what I did was I took it and I played around with the oh, actual... Uh, left. Transparencies. So any of your stuff in OBS. Delta twelve sixty three. You go to to tower runway two eight left. Clear to land. So my wind flight. Two nine or zero at one. So four. if you go to filters, and then under, I think I hit plus and added color correction or something like that. And then you see the opacity. Opacity. You could change it. So I brought it down from 100, which was like almost black background. Ooh, what's this? Stop that. I don't like that. Okay. Uh, down to uh, 45, and it made it semi-transparent. So that way uh, you guys can see through it. That way you can see it, but it's not so intrusive. All right, here's our road going that way. And I think we want to turn that way, right to the right. So, yeah, we're basically kind of cruising on up, following the river, river and all that stuff. Whoops, damn. Okay, let's do this one more time the right way. Alright, so what we want to do is turn to a heading of about zero, ooh, it just got nice and clear out. Zero, four, five. Uh, that's the one, Watt, yes. And I don't know to what degree you can modify that, but I, but if it goes in to the same browser plugin source, you should be able to resize. So when you come in here, uh, you could probably play with the opacity and make it like a little bit transparent. You can also typically, uh, uh, I think think when I went here I did uh, well hold on if I do so okay enable preview you can drag the size back and forth too so basically what you do is you uh, change the size of it you know like how, how big you want it to appear how small you want it to appear uh, Winrock Love, thank you for following. So, yeah, the way you see it appearing in people's streams, you could experiment with that, see if you can tweak it. Make it bigger, smaller, drag it around, and uh, Delta 143, exit see if right you can make it like semi transparent. And Bravo to the ramp across the runway 3 4 right. Can you use it on a Mac? That I don't know. It's a web it's a web browser base, so as long as the information can be pulled off your Mac, yeah, you should be able to. I didn't download anything. I think the Benison one does use some what is it, X U I P C or whatever that acronym is. It basically pulls information off of the simulator. Delta and that's how, that's how like it tells you like your progress, how far you've gone, how far you have to go. Uh, so as long as that can also be run on a Mac, then you should be fine. What kind of Mac are you running, by the way, Pat Dog? And how's your sim running on it? How old is it? I used an iMac uh, and X Plane. For my entire version 9 run and, and into 10.45, I still have it. I use it. I'm actually talking, I'm looking at chat with it, and I do my day to day stuff on it. But when it was time to upgrade, I, uh, I did go to a Windows machine for the sim purposes. 
So here's our meandering, windy river area. Oops, sorry. So we're kind of coming up on here. A lot of winding, meandering going on the whole way up. So what we should do is potentially prepare to talk to Great Falls. So unless we get another frequency change, we're going to put in the tower frequency 118.7. Seven. The other thing we can do too is open that in a new tab. And I'm going to refresh this page. And then after that's done refreshing, I got an altimeter setting of 3008. When we don't have any specific ATIS stuff for this airport, so it's not yet a supported airport for Pilot Edge. Well, they might not even have an ATIS. Do they have an ATIS? Tower frequency? Hold on. Uh, they do have an ATIS in real life. So when Pilot yeah, Edge officially starts when operating this airport, airport right. uh, then they'll have like an ATIS uh, ability on there usually. Delta 200, contact NorCal approach 135.65. Oh, that's so cool. Awesome. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get that going. Maybe I'll work on that tonight. Or tomorrow. I'll be out late tonight. Delta 200, North California, Roger. After Archie cleared ILS from like 28 left to first. That looks pretty cool down there, huh? Uh, yeah, please post it. Maybe you could share it in the chat, and then maybe if you don't mind uh, whispering it to me so I can also. Is it just one single download? Or do you have to. Uh... <clears throat> Download a few things. I think I said 118.7. We'll double check it though. Might not even use that frequency since I don't think it's on the list. Well, with the exception, we'll go there to make our radio calls in the pattern. Uh. Yep, a zip and drag to plugins. Nice. All right, so the elevation of this airport, Great Falls, is 3,680 feet. Let's go ahead and bring up our weather source again. Currently, the winds here are variable at 6. So maybe what we'll do is we'll use the... Uh, Runway facing relatively like 2-4. Uh, so, 2-1. Runway 2-1, I believe that is, right? 2-2? Two, 2-1, two? Two, yeah. Uh, and then over here, according to this, there is no right pattern runways. So, we'll do a left pattern entry. Okay. So, 4,000... Let's call it 4,700 for a traffic pattern. Altitude 4,700. Uh, I'm going to rewind time a little bit just so we can enjoy the textures a little bit more. You guys are okay with that. Plus, I don't want the airport light to come on and give it away. Oh, it doesn't work for the Mac. Now, Pad Dog, I wonder if that's because the overlay itself doesn't work for the Mac, or is it because the software that it needs to pull the information from is not available from the Mac, you know? What do you do for a computer upgrade? Just out of curiosity. Like, is it a brand new Mac? Have you been using it forever? I mean, I've been a Mac user since 91, but I would recommend, if you can, when you are in the market for an upgrade, to consider buying a Windows machine for your simming purposes. Because 
it really just allows you to enjoy a lot of goodness. Yeah, that's cool. What year is the iMac? Uh, I haven't tried flightplan.com yet, no. Bonanza, 6 Tango Bravo, advising you've got the Great Falls uh, Airport in sight, and I'm showing the altimeter there, 3008. Okay, 3008, we'll advise when Great Falls in sight, 6 Tango Bravo. I think I shortened that prematurely. <clears throat> so we got this little town over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that is Cascade because you see how this town of Cascade is, well, it is a uh, VFR checkpoint uh, with the flag here and it's in this little notch of the curve of the road. Let's see if we can see that airport. It might be under my wing right now. Let's uh, jump in the back seat for a second. See if they see it. So this is a private airport, so sometimes X Plane throws out an obscene green runway texture. Oh, there it is. That's the private airport right there. So we're going to call that Cascade. So, Cascade, if I take my. this here, I don't even have to move the magenta line, I just click it once and click on GPS to plot a point there. So we're 19 miles out from the airport. And we're at 9,500. we got to get down to 4,800. So let's just start descending now. So... Because that way we can do it at 500 feet per minute. I'll put it down at 55 initially. So we're following this meandering river, and the road is off to the left. And the airport, in relation to the river, is actually going to be... The road's going to curve to the right. You might see the road turning before we actually spot the airport. Uh, and at that point, the river, the airport's only four miles away, approximately. Four or five miles, so... Uh, that's good to know. So here is the road. Here's the bend in the road I believe so the airport should be like right in here I just don't see it just yet I'm gonna get a little bit closer to there though uh, Raul thank you for following oh, okay cool so basically you're able to get it like from your church nice the you're talking about the computer right uh, bunch of numbers, 1993, thanks for following. Yeah, that's cool, sub. Yeah, I mean, I still use my Mac every day, it's just... Flying, I do the Windows machine. It's actually kind of nice just having a dedicated simming. Wait a minute. I think that's the airport. Right over there. Hold on. Was there like. Hmm. Yeah, because the road actually turns and it's right by the road. That makes sense, right? The road is turning. It's right by the road. Okay. And this was, I think, still Salt Lake Center. So, like center, Bonanza 576 Tango Bravo as uh, the airport site. Bonanza 6 Tango Bravo, Roger. No traffic reserve between you and Gray Falls. And uh, just to be advised, I am showing some VF traffic off your 1 o'clock, 5 miles. Same direction, altitude intake 7,000, possibly descending into Gray Falls. Just keep an eye out for him. Uh, radar service terminated, squawk and maintain a VFR frequency changes. Okay, squawk, maintain, uh, squawk and maintain VFR. Which I approved, and uh, thanks for the help. 16 at Bravo. Alright, so we're gonna go one, two, 
zero zero. This is uh, uh, Levante. Thank you very much for following. I've become more mindful of switching over to twelve hundred because. Too much, Charlie Roger. One of the pilot controllers once said, "You always forget to change it." Delta and then he kind of commented in general that it's a, a very common thing that pilot pilots do. They acknowledge everything except for making the change on the Delta squawk. San Francisco Tower, Roger. So I've been trying to do that a little bit more. Delta 200, San Francisco Sub Tower, runway 28 left, clear to land, wind 290 zero All right, so we're landing on this runway on the 2-1 side of it. So I'm kind of just coming wide, letting us descend. I want to come in. Oh, yeah, there's the traffic out there. I'm going to zoom in on it now that I've spotted it so you guys can see it. Look at that. Hold on. What if they're like doing the same thing going on the same runway? See the tower over there? It's kind of cool. Oh, it looks like they're going to overfly the airport. Slow us down just a little bit. Alright, so we want it to enter that. We're high, really. Uh, 364700. Five zero eight box, turn X-ray up. That's a clearance. Good afternoon, clearance on request, Emma. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to do a descending right turn. I'm going to do a descending right turn to a heading of about zero, uh, 350, which will basically do a turn all the way around and then put us into a 45 into a downwind. Well, we're going to try that at least. It sounds good on paper, doesn't it? Okay. I could just increase the descent rate, but I don't want to hurt your ears. <laughs> Thanks. Gotta be careful how much I turn the adding bug. I go even one degree past, we'll roll the airplane the other way. Uh, oops, wrong one. And we get down to 46. 47. We'll go down to 700 feet per minute. Well, now that I got my 10s, I might as well do 650. I don't know what the real airplane has. In X-Plane 10, it only let you do 600, 700, 800. I have a feeling that it's just the manipulator is a little wrong in X-Plane 11. So, like, they can, you know, we can fix that, but... So where's the airport? Okay, I see a runway. One of the runways over here. And I kind of lost sight of the... Okay. I think the, okay, the runway that's facing 030 is right here. Let's switch over to the tower. And what are they there? Great Falls? Where do they go? Uh, uh, Great Falls, okay. Great Falls traffic 
Green and white banana the 5716 umbrella is entering a left downwind uh, runway 21, Great Falls. Here's another uh, tile issue here. Let me look that one up. We need 3008, by the way. Oh, that's going to actually help us out. See an airplane down on the ground there. Is that an airplane? It looks like an airplane. Oh, yeah, that's a rotating ro radar. I do see an airplane on the runway, though. It just landed. Or it is landing, or maybe doing flyby. I don't know. It just took off, actually. So we're uh, coming a beam. Our touchdown zone. Let's go ahead and put our landing gear down. Let it slow down at 105. Uh, software game, thanks for following. Hey Rob, it's happening. Looks like there's a letter on that hillside there right at the end of the runway. Great Falls traffic, Green Open Ads 5716, Bravo's left, uh, cro uh, left base 2 1, Great Falls. Look at that rail yard down there. Okay. Approach flaps coming in. Should slow us down to about 90. Super Dave 900, thank you very much for following. Great Falls traffic, Green with Nancy 5716. I have a final 2 1, Great Falls. Look at that, we actually didn't overshoot. Okay, prop full forward, make sure full rich. Get it down to about 80. Is that a tricolor Vassy on the left side there? What is that green dot? How often do you see one of those? Slow. Uh, has ham, 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 hams. Thanks for following. Sorry, I'm like looking at different things here now. Hey, look at that seven forty seven. Parked half inside of a building with the nose sticking out. That's a high speed. Let's keep going. Check out that crappy landing in a minute. I think uh, U.S. West real life uh, got caught up in the lack of exclusion zones of this airport. Alpha 5. 
Yeah, this airplane's more squirrely in at 11 than it is in 10, that's for sure. The ground handling needs fixing. Great Falls traffic. Greenway Bonanza's exited runway 21. Great Falls. Oops. Alright. Flaps coming up. So I said landing light strobes. Do the first year. Yeah, uh, well, you know who also needs to catch up? I'll, I'll refly them with you guys. Maybe me, you, and JSnap will do, like, some group flying or something. Jump on, uh, his Discord chat, you know, if you want to do that. That'd be fun. JSnap could stream his. Uh, double dose 42. Thanks for following. Check out this Cafe Pacific. So, like, this is Air National Guard territory. Get out of here. Flight Logic hosting. Thank you very much, Mr. Logical. Yeah, we got a nice Cafe Pacific Boeing 747 400 series. They had a little parking mishap. You can even see the police are already on the scene. They're saying, sorry, uh, we have a situation here. <laughs> What's up, Rob? How's it going? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I can't wait for the for a nice seven forty seven to be available for explain. I think it, it's like a broken record. Seeing that all the time. Let's check the, uh, first of all, let's disconnect. Disconnected. And, uh, how did the, uh, speed testing go, Logic? And did you, I'm just curious, did you do it in 11 or 10? Because I'm noticing that, uh, in 11, uh, this airplane is, doesn't seem to be performing to the numbers it's supposed to. Or at least that I'm used to in 10. Which then I'm assuming is correct. Alright. Uh, what am I doing? So I want to come up to PE aware. Let's check out our flight. It says I arrived. That's a good sign. This is our routing. So direct was like that. We of course went by on routing uh, okay so you were flying in 10. Am I happy with the Bonanza in version 11? I mean, it sucks that it's not updated for it, really. Like, it's not even just looks-wise. It's... I mean, I can live with it. Yeah. I don't know. I do want to keep flying 11, because I like the lighting in it, but... I like the way it performs in 10 better, I guess. I'm just wondering when they're going to get around to doing it. Alright, so we're going to submit the flight. 
So we gotta go here. And we're gonna paste. And hopefully it says flight six. We did it. From uh Idaho Flying Joseph to Great Falls. Gotcha. Well, how far is it off? Uh, you, you, maybe, su you know, if you submit your findings on explain.org uh, on the forums, they'll respond pretty quickly. They'll take your feedback. You know, say, oh, thanks for that. We'll make those, you know, them. They'll either say that they'll make the adjustments or they'll tell you why you know they can't or they'll tell you that you're wrong and why you're wrong like they'll they're, they're pretty I don't know they've always been responsive so oh all right yeah well that's I could see that being something that yeah should be taken care of first oh wait okay uh, let's do a resume flight and we'll do a little replay. Okay, so there was a crosswind coming in, and I was being sloppy on the way in because. I was looking around and acknowledged a couple of followers and whatnot, but then last minute I kind of tried to get it together, and then I tried to drop my landing gear according to the wind direction, and I did that, but we touched down a little harder, but that's all right. <laughs> Why for sin sheer? Thank you for following. You know, with these fake followers coming through, now I'm always questioning, like, is that a real name or not? It's like right here, I kind of did a last minute. Yeah, usually those URLs get cut off. Oh, wait, let's check that out. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you go in the airplane and you start to slide. Where is it located? Have you ever were you there? Slow it down a little bit. You know what I was most pleased with was the fact that I stayed straight. At that moment, usually after I touch down in a crosswind attempt, 
Like, I'll drop my landing gear, get the wind side uh, gear down, and then I'll get the airplane down. And all of a sudden, I'm like super squirrely all over the place, or the wind will start to kind of lift up one wing again. Somehow it was relative. Well, we're still kind of coming off center line, but. South of Portland. Ah, oh, okay. Actually, you know what might be a cooler way to watch it is... Hold on. Do shift A. All right, one last view from the tower. Donk. Gdonk. So I wonder what the fix is for that. Anybody know what, like, the technical issue that causes the crazy shadow? 
Uh, and also, just in general, like, you know how the further away the airplane is, you got these blocky shadows, and also you have the weird, like, things taking place on the fuselage. Not even the shadow, like, you know, when you're, let's say, like, it looks like everything's sort of, what do they call it, Z thrashing or something like that? When, you know, like, you can see it right there. We'll get it further away. And sometimes you can, like, see into the airplane. Yeah, you can see it right there. So it's like this. That weirdness. Like you can see the dude's feet and everything. You can see his toes. That is the view distance. That shadow on the fuselage will be updated in 11.10. Oh, Epic Nobody. Uh, so, to, so to save a view, it's con hold down the control button and then any zero, 0 through 9 on the numeric keypad. It has to be on the numeric keypad. If you don't have an extended keypad, then there's another way to do it. I can show you if you don't have one. Just let me know and I'll show you right now. So the shadow will be fixed, but what about that weird, like, you can see through the fuselage issue? Is that also going to be fixed? That'd be pretty awesome if it was, because that's been around forever. Oh, well, so like, you want me, okay, yeah, sure. So let's say you want to do uh, the uh, custom cockpit views. So for anybody watching this on a later date on a VOD or something. So yeah, you want to do like this, 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 these custom views, right? So normally what you do is, like right now I'm hitting the 5 key, the 4 key, the 6 key on the numeric keypad. But not everybody has a numeric keypad. So if you wanted to program your numeric keypad to do this, you just hit the control button, hold it down, and then push the key that you want it. So you, you move the E key, F key, R key, Q key, zoom in with period, zoom out, right? Put it where you want, hit control, and then the number, and then whatever you chose would bring you back to that spot, but not everybody has that numeric keypad. So the way you do it is you first go to uh, keyboard, and then you do a search, search command. So do views. Okay. And uh, then once you're in here, you just scroll on down until you get, I think it's in the manipulate view, if not further down, let's see. Quick look. Okay, here it is, it's under quick look. So you got your normal like glance, left, right, there's not even anything programmed over here, interesting. But anyway, when you get down to over here, it says, uh, so go to 3D cockpit saved location one. Okay, so this is telling me to push the numeric keypad zero, right? And for me, let's see if it actually moves my views while we're in this, no, oops, oh boy. Oh, I accidentally searched that. Okay, let me come back over. So I can't do it while we're, that makes sense. Okay, so let's come back over here. So, numeric keypad zero, right? So that will take you to one. Now, if we wanted to, we could change what key that would do that, but I don't want to. Oh, wait, no, I do. Okay, so if you don't have numeric keypad one or zero, then you might choose to make that something else. So what I personally did on my laptop, which didn't have the extended keyboard, was I did a keyboard combination. 
I did, um, what did I do? I did, I did, so I, 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 what did I do? I go here, and then I had hit, like, uh, control zero. So I used my normal one through, zero through nine keys on the top of my keyboard, but I used the control. Because zero did other things, or like, you know how like one and two do your flaps, three and four, right? Do I think like maybe your mixture or your or your props or something like that? I don't want to mess with that, so I did a keystroke. So I did um, control, and then zero. Okay, so you you want to you want to decide what what keystrokes will take you to these nine ten presets. One uh, through essentially uh, ten, right? Okay. All right. So you do all those first. That's what's going to take you there. Okay. The next thing you got to do is then program what's going to store it. Now, by default, right? They have it set up as numeric uh, num numeric keypad zero is the stored button that's going to bring you to this. Go to it. But if you want to memorize it. Okay, notice this. They have control and then hit the numeric keypad. Control. So this is like the default setup. All right. You got to program the keystroke that's going to save this. So if I were to use the example, I'll just make it happen. All right. I'm going to hit control zero. Conflicting. Oh, it's already bound to nav two flip stamp. Okay. Don't want to do that. That's cool that they tell you that. Right, let's try something else. Uh, alt zero. Let's see. Alt zero. Okay. Alt zero. Right. Cool. So alt zero. That will save. Uh, that that's what I would have to hit in order to go to this saved stored location. You can do whatever you want. You can make it a single keystroke, whatever. Okay. Now that's location one. Now if I want to, now I have to program since I don't have the keypad. I then would do, uh, let's say, Alt Z. Well, actually, I don't want to do that. Uh, let me do that. Oh, let me see if it let me do that. Alt Z zero. Let's see if it'll do that. Oops. You basically would come up with like a uh, a key a keystroke that would. Hey, Kevo thirty four. Thanks for following. You come up with a keystroke that would memorize this location. So maybe instead of a better example might be instead of Alt Zero, let's say uh, let's say Z Zero, right? Let's try it. Let's see if it does it. Uh, Z Zero. Wait, why is it not letting me do that? It's not gonna. How do I do it? What's this? Plus Zero. No. Oh, uh, wait, how about this one? Right. Alt control. Oh, maybe I know why. Okay. Let's try alt control zero. Okay, so that works. Oh, wait, hold on. One more time. Okay. That's why. Okay. So, so now what I have it set up at the moment. Oops, I want that. Okay. I have it set so that if I want to go to my number one location, I would have to hit Alt Zero since I don't have that numeric keypad. And if I want to memorize the new view, I do Alt Control and Zero to make that happen. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of uh, weird to understand. So by default, I'm going to put this back here, and then I want control in there so now it's back to the way it was but if I need to reprogram it to, so give that a shot it should work I know somebody did a video on how to do it too I, I, I learned how to do it in X-Plane 10 which is even harder because you couldn't like search for the functions and all that so hey funky killer thanks for following so yeah so now you'll be able to do it you know and then you'll be able to come up with your Different views and all that. Cool. All right, guys. Well, listen. Uh, I'm gonna head out to dinner. 
I'm going to probably be on later tonight. Whether or not I'm streaming or not, I don't know. Uh, I would like to do some more flying at one point, but I don't know what time I'll be out until. So I'll either see you in the stream or somebody else's stream. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, you guys have a fine evening. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's have a quick look. Let's see what other action's going on. And uh, what we'll do is we will. Oh, you know what? Let's check out. Let's check out Mature Gamer. He's streaming X Plane. <clears throat> And uh, he is doing an uh, attempting the I-11 on Pilot Edge. So I didn't even realize he was on Pilot Edge. I think I did, but I think I forgot. So anyway, let's check out his stream. Tell him hello. Give him a follow. Uh, he's got some photo action. And uh, he's doing the I-11 right now. So that should be cool. I think he's heading on into Victorville. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for hanging. We'll see you later.